This is part two in a series I'm doing of covering editing video on an iPad. I'll link to part one in the description below. In this part, I'll be covering the basics of editing video in LumaFusion. In the last part, we covered setting up our media and starting a new project. So you should see all of your assets in the top left corner. If not, just hit the imported button and browse to the folders we made. Now you should see the clips we have. Below is the timeline. This is where our video is made. We can drag the first clip to the timeline and drop it on the first track. You'll see a marker on the timeline. This is the playhead. This indicates where we are in the timeline and what we're seeing in the preview window. If we hit the play button, it'll start playing from this position. To move it, just scroll through the timeline. You can expand or shrink the timeline by pinching and zooming. Let's get back to the clip we just added. I don't want the whole clip. In fact, I just want a few seconds of it. So let's shave off some of the beginning and the end. You can grab either side of the clip and start to shave it down. Now you can grab the other side and do the same thing. This will shrink the clip down. If you're looking for something more precise, move the marker to where you want to be able to make a cut and then tap the cut tool. Then hit the trash icon to get rid of the remaining clip. Then add another clip and then drag it to the timeline and drop it next to the previous clip. Now you can preview a video and see how these two clips work together. Let's adjust the start and the end of the second clip, just like we did the first one. Play that back, and now we have a short video, with these two clips have a dedicated start and stop point. The timeline button on the side will change how the assets work in the timeline. The default option makes everything snap into place. This is a much more linear way of editing. If you tap the button, it'll change it to a more free-flowing timeline. Here you can insert a clip anywhere and everything is pretty much free to move around. I prefer the second way, but one thing that makes it hard to work in is there's no way to select multiple clips to adjust their position. That means if you make a change earlier in the timeline and it isn't in the default position with snapping, you'll have to go and manually adjust all the other clips. My number one request for LumaFusion is a way to select multiple clips. A way to get around needing to select multiple clips is to make sure all your assets are linked together. This means if two clips are on top of each other, there should be a line connecting them. If I move the bottom clip, it'll drag the clip on top of it with it. Same thing if I go to delete it, it'll delete both of those. If you don't want them to be tied together, just select one and hit the unlink button. It's the chain icon. So if I delete a clip earlier in the timeline, the other clips will then keep its position if they're unlinked. Once you have a section cut the way you like it, make sure all your assets are linked together. This will make things a lot easier for you if you have to cut something up earlier in the timeline. If you don't have something filmed yet, you can always use a blank clip. Just tap on a clip and then select the blank clip option. This will act as a placeholder. Then once you have the clip, you can just drag it and drop it on top of the blank clip. LumaFusion will then ask you if you want to keep the original clip's duration or use the new clip's duration. If you pick the original clip, it will cut down the new clip to fit that time. If you pick the new clip, this pushes everything further down the timeline and inserts it right there. If you want to add something later on and but didn't put in a blank clip, just drag a clip and place it between the cut of two other clips. This will allow you to insert that clip in that place. Again, this will push everything else down in the timeline. LumaFusion also has support for in and out points. In and out points are something all professional video editors use. This allows them to pick exactly what they're adding to their timeline from any clip. Just select a clip, scrub through it, and hit the in point button. Then scrub a little bit further down and select the out point button. Now drag that clip from the preview window down to your timeline. This will add just that clip between those two in and out points to the timeline. Nothing that's before the end point and nothing that's after the out point will be added. LumaFusion remembers the in and out point, so if you pull that clip back up again, it'll show it to you. What's great about this is if you want to change the timing, you can just slide the section down further and then re-grab that clip and add it to the timeline. Speaking of remembering things, LumaFusion puts a check mark next to clips you've already used, so you know not to use them again. If you tap the, on a clip in the timeline and select the toolbox icon, you can see a lot of different tools we have. The first one is a slip. This allows you to change the in and out points even after you've added a clip to the timeline. This is handy if you realize you didn't get the timing just right. Next is the clone tool. This will make an exact copy of the selected clip. 
Detach will separate the audio from a video clip. This is great if you need to make some sort of adjustment to either the video or the audio, but don't want to affect one of those. I covered this one already, but Link will just link whatever clips are on top of each other together. If it's already linked together, this will become the unlink button. Just tap it and they're no longer linked. Preset, edit, and clip are for effects, and we're going to get way more into that into another part. One last thing we need to talk about is the timeline layout for video clips. As you can see, we can stack video clips on top of each other. The clip on the bottom is on track one, then right above that is track two, and then above that is track three. Whatever clip, image, or title that's on top in the timeline will be the asset that's displayed on top in the video. So if you have a video clip in track one and then put another video clip on top of that in track two, the clip in track two will then cover up the first video clip on track one. However, if you were to put an image with a transparent background on top of the clip in track one, you would then see the image and then the clip underneath it. So depending on what kind of media you have, you may get a different outcome. Let me give an example of how you would use this in your edit. Say you have a character giving a passionate speech, but you don't want to see them. You want to see who they're talking to. This is the technique on how you would do that. You would start with the person giving the speech for a few seconds in track one. Then you would cut to who they're talking to by placing another clip on top of the first track. This way you still have track one's audio playing. You got to see the person talking, but now you're seeing the audience and the way they're reacting to who is talking. There are many different ways to cut video and I'll put some resources in the description below to check out. In the next part, I'll be covering audio and taking a look at an application called Ferrite. If you have any questions, you can find me on Twitter at Chris underscore Lolly. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.